What on earth do you tell clients this morning on the back of this payrolls report? <laughs> Well, I, I think the panel is correct that we should look at the trend, and that's largely why you can discount this. And here's, here's the reason why I think that's the case. Establishment payrolls just count people on payrolls. So it includes multiple job holders. So if you were a furloughed government worker or a private sector contractor out of work, maybe you went and took a part-time job in, in January. So you would have shown up in retail or leisure and hospitality or maybe construction. And, and therefore, you would have been counted twice and the January employment number was high. And in the household survey, you would have been classified as working part-time for economic reasons. I think that was up about 590,000 last month. So you get the reversal of that this month. You go back to your one job, so you're not counted twice. And then you get the sharp decline in part-time for, for economic reasons. So I do think this is mainly a shutdown effect with some bad weather sprinkled in. And I do think truth is somewhere between the January and February data, roughly 175,000 jobs a month, which is where an economy growing somewhere between 2 and 2.5% two and is probably going to end up. So, Michael, do we have to wait until next month, this month, to get a clean piece of data on the U.S. economy? Is that essentially yeah. what you're saying? Yeah, I think that's right. So there's the shutdown and, and other factors are going to make the economic activity data really noisy in in q1 and, and we just have to we just have to wait through it so michael what's the explanation for the wage number if we discount the outlier headline figure do you discount the wage figure as well or do we believe that no, I, in, in general, I believe it because it fits the, the broader trend that's been in place, that whether it's 3.8 or 3.9 or 4 in the unemployment rate, we still think that's a tight uh, labor market. The, the Beige Book that was released earlier this week had a bunch of anecdotes and sprinkles of tight labor markets and labor shortages. So in, in our expectation was that wage growth around 3.5% this year is, is completely reasonable. So I think that fits the broader narrative. Yeah. And it's just the, the, the two surveys which classify furloughed workers differently, I think, give you a picture on employment trends.